Welcome back to the Gospel Teachings of R.A.K. This is Jacob, and today we're going to be talking about holidays and idols. Starting with Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 28 through 32. Observe and hear all the things that I command you, that it may be well with you and your children after you forever, when you shall do what is good and pleasing in the sight of the Lord your God, when the Lord your God shall have destroyed before your face the nations, which you shall go in to possess. And when you shall do what is good and pleasing in the sight of the Lord your God, beware lest you imitate them after they are destroyed at your coming in, and lest you seek after their ceremony, saying, as, they, as these nations have worshipped their gods, so will I also worship. You shall not do in like manner to the Lord your God, for they have done to their gods all the abominations which the Lord abhors, offering their sons and daughters and burning them with fire. What I command you, that only do you to the Lord, neither add anything nor diminish. Jumping to 4 Kings chapter 17 verses 1 through 41. In the twelfth year of Achaz, king of Judah, Osi, the son of Elah, reigned in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did evil before the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that had been before him. And in the ninth year of Osi, the king of the Assyrians took Samaria and carried Israel away to Assyria. And he placed them in a hala, in harbor by the river of Gozan, in the cities of the Medes. For so it was the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And they worshipped strange gods, and they walked according to the way of the nations, which the Lord had destroyed in the sight of the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel, because they had done in like manner. And the children of Israel offended the Lord their God with things that were not right, and built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchman to the fenced city. And they made them statues and groves on every high hill and under every shady tree. And they burnt incense there upon altars after the manner of the nations, which the Lord had removed from their face. And they did wicked things, provoking the Lord. And they worshipped abominations concerning which the Lord had commanded them that they should not do this thing. And the Lord testified to them in Israel and in Judah by the hand of all the prophets and seers, saying, Return from your wicked ways, and keep my precepts and ceremonies, according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, and as I have sent to you in the hand of my servants the prophets. And they hearkened not, but hardened their necks like to the neck of their fathers, who would not obey the Lord their God. And they rejected his ordinances and the covenant that he made with their fathers, and the testimonies which he testified against them, and they followed vanities, and acted vainly. And they followed the nations that were round about them, concerning which the Lord had commanded them that they should not do as they did. And they forsook all the precepts of the Lord their God, and made to themselves two molten calves and grooves, and adored all the host of heaven, and they served Baal, or Baal, and consecrated their sons and their daughters through fire, and they gave themselves to divinations and soothsaying, and delivered themselves up to do evil before the Lord to provoke him. And the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them from his sight. And there remained only the tribe of Judah. But neither did Judah itself keep the commandments of the Lord their God, but they walked in the errors of Israel, which they had wrought. And the Lord cast off all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers, till he cast them away from his face. Even from that time, when Israel was rent from the house of David and made Jeroboam son of Nebat their king, for Jeroboam separated Israel from the Lord and made them commit a great sin. And the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he had done, and they departed not from them. Till the Lord removed Israel from his face, as he had spoken in the hand of all his servants the prophets. And Israel was carried away out of their land to Assyria unto this day. And the king of, As of the Assyrians brought people from Babylon, and from Kutha, and from Ava, and from Emath, and from Sepharvaim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria, instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria, and dwelt in the cities thereof. And when they began to dwell there, they feared not the Lord, and the Lord sent lions among them, which killed them. And it was told the king of the Assyrians, and it was said, the nations which you have removed and made to dwell in the cities of Samaria know not the ordin ordinances of the God of the land, and the Lord has sent lions among them, and behold, they killed them.
because they know not the manner of the God of the land. And the king of the Assyrians commanded, saying, Carry there one of the priests whom you brought from their captive, and let him go, and dwell with them, and let him teach them in the ordinances of the God of the land. So one of the priests who had been carried away captive from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should worship the Lord. And every nation made gods of their own, and put them in the temples of the high places, which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities where they dwelt. For the men of Babylon made Sukothbanoth, and the Kuthites made Nergal, and the men of Emath made Asima, and the Hevites made Nebahaz, and Thartok. And they that were of Sepharvaim burnt their children in fire, to Adramelech and Anamelech, the gods of Sepharvaim. And nevertheless they worshipped the Lord, and they made to themselves of the lowest of the people, priests of the high places, and they placed them in the temples of the high places. And when they worshipped the Lord, they served also their own gods, according to the custom of the nations, out of which they were brought to Samaria. Unto this day they followed the old manner. They fear not the Lord, neither do they keep his ceremonies, and judgments, and law, and the commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he surnamed Israel, with whom he made a covenant, and charged them, saying, You shall not fear strange gods, nor shall you adore them, nor worship them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt with great power, and a stretched out arm, him shall you fear, and him shall you adore, and to him shall you sacrifice." And the ceremonies, and judgments, and law, and the commandment, which he wrote for you, you shall observe to do them always, and you shall not fear strange gods. And the covenant that he made with you, you shall not forget, neither shall you worship strange gods, but fear the Lord your God, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. But they did not hearken, but did according to their custom. So these nations feared the Lord, but nevertheless served also their idols, their children also and grandchildren, as their fathers did, so do they unto this day. Number one, festival definition, pertaining to a feast, a time or day of feasting or celebration, especially periodic religious celebration. Holiday definition, ho uh, holy day, a religious festival, a day of freedom from labor. Two, which days did God ordain as his feast days, or festival or holy days? Leviticus 23, verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall call holy. Six days shall you do work, and the seventh day, because it is the rest of the Sabbath, shall be called holy. You shall uh, do no work on that day. Definitions. Seventh day, Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Saturday, the seventh or last day of the week. Sunday is the first day of the week. Jumping to verse 4, These also are the holy days of the Lord, which you shall celebrate in their seasons. Solemnity of unleavened bread, note Passover. You shall count fifty days, and you shall call this day most solemn and most holy. And this next one is Pentecost. Keep a Sabbath, from verse 24, with the sound of trumpets, and it shall be called holy. Note, this is the Feast of Trumpets. 27, the Day of Atonement shall be called holy. 34, the Feast of Tabernacles. Note, the above shows there are five feast, festival, or holy days which God commands us to celebrate in their seasons. Number three, what did God prophesy concerning his festival days? Psalms chapter 78 verse 3. They said in their heart, the whole kindred of them together, let us abolish all the festival days of God from the land. Number four, what are the main feast, festival, or holidays celebrated in America today? A is Easter, replaced God's ordained feast of Passover. Easter definition, a paschal feast, originally a pagan festival in honor of the goddess of spring, Esther, held in April. Note, Easter is a holiday named after a pagan goddess, the pagan goddess of spring, B, Halloween, which is October 31st. Halloween definition, the evening preceding All Hallows or All Saints Day, October 31st. Note, this is angel worship, also because it replaced the witches' most sacred day and adopted their customs. It is also the celebration of witchcraft, which God does not like. C, Thanksgiving. It was replaced, or I'm sorry, it replaced God's ordained harvest festival included in the Feast of Tabernacles. 
D, Christmas, on December 25th. The date chosen for Christmas was used um, by pagans to celebrate the birthday of their Persian sun god, Mithras, in connection with the winter solstice. Christians simply replaced Mithras' birthday with Christ's birthday. That's a big no-no, and that is one thing that um, it doesn't matter what anybody says to me about um, holidays are fine, um, why would God want us to celebrate those old holidays they talked about in the Old Testament? Uh, well, I can tell you 100%, I, I know our God, and I'm sure if you have read any of the Old Testament, you should know your God too, that he does not like that stuff. Not at all. Um, so the fact that we're changing multiple pagan holidays into seeming like they're Christian does not make them better. We're still doing the same things. We're just acting like it's not the same thing. And that's, uh, that's not right. That's ungodly. And, um, God will chastise America and is chastising America for this. Uh, next would be New Year's Day. January 1st, replaced God's New Year's Day, which is the first of spring, um, which is Exodus 12, 2, 12, 18, and 34, 18. Um, also, if you consider January, how could the beginning of a year or the beginning of anything start with the winter? It doesn't work that way. Very much the spring is the beginning of everything. Rain, plants, harvest, um, but then that goes into summer and fall and then winter. And that's what makes sense. That's the only thing that makes sense, actually. And that's why it's biblical. And that's why our world is confused. Definitions. January is the month of Janus. Janus, Roman god who was patron of beginnings and endings. Note, New Year's Day is a holiday honoring the pagan god Janus. Um, and pretty much every month, week, day um, is all pagan, um, unfortunately, um, Saturday, Saturn, Sunday, Sunday, um, Monday, Moon Day. It's just, uh, it, the list goes on and on. Uh, jumping to F, Sunday, the first day of the week, replaced God's ordained Sabbath of the seventh day of the week. Five, have God's feast days been abolished as prophesied at Psalm 78, three, which was the verse we read just a little bit ago. Yeah, the answer is yes. The above clearly shows that America's main holidays do not include even one of God's ordained holy days, and in fact, many replace and thereby effectively, effectively abolish God's ordained days. Note, for a classic account of replacement, read how the wicked King Jeroboam replaced God's feast day with his own feast day as documented at Three Kings 12, 26-33, which um, if you don't have a Douay Reims Bible, that would be 1 Kings 12, 26 through 33. It is time for all true Christians to open their eyes to God's written word and cease accepting church propagated tradition as God's gospel that seeing they may see. Did the early Christian church celebrate God's feast days? Pentecost. The feast of Pentecost was mentioned by name thrice in the New Testament. That's three times. Acts 2, verses 1 through 4 and 14. And when the days of Pentecost were drawing to a close, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a violent wind blowing, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them parted tongues as of fire, which settled upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in foreign tongues, even as the Holy Spirit prompted them to speak. But Peter, standing up with the eleven... Note, the fact that the apostles were meeting together on the day of Pentecost is a strong indication that they continued to celebrate one of God's feast days in particular, and the feast days in general, even after Jesus' death and resurrection. Um, also, if you notice that this is when the Holy Spirit comes upon the apostles, um, there is a lot of talk amongst Christianity about speaking in tongues. Um, all I'm going to say is this. Speaking in tongues was talked about in the Bible. Yes, it was. But it was talked about only in the Bible when it was a man speaking in multiple languages at one time and having multiple people that understood those languages understand him at the same time. That is speaking in tongues. Not That's not tongues. I don't. That's made up. You can think what you want. Unfortunately, God's not going to help you um, in a real way. That It might actually work the opposite way. 
Um, I ask you to look in your Bible and see what God says about tongues and when it's used and why. So um, do that. But I do want to touch on that because that is an important thing, I think, in Christianity. Acts chapter 20, verse 16 and 22. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus, lest he should be delayed in the province of Asia. For he was hastening to be in Jerusalem, if it were possible for him, by the day of Pentecost. And now behold... I am going to Jerusalem, compelled by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there. Note, these passages pertain to a time subsequent to Jesus' death and resurrection and the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the twelve apostles at Jerusalem, as outlined in Acts 1-4 uh, and 14, uh, read above, and clearly show that the day of Pentecost still held special significance with the Holy Spirit. And thus, the Apostle Paul, the latter of whom was prompted by the Holy Spirit to be in Jerusalem by that holy feast day of God. So, notice that um, it, it's not exactly easy, especially back then, to find out when these feast days were because they were all um, based on the lunar calendar. So, you have to remember, they took serious time to find some of this stuff out. Even with what we have now, it still takes time to do that every year. Um, so just remember, there's no reason Paul would have went through all of that trouble and um, consideration to not celebrate it. He definitely was celebrating it. Acts 24, verse 11. For you can take as certain that it is not more than 12 days since I, or Paul, went up to worship in Jerusalem. Note, this passage is a fulfillment of Paul's intent to be in Jerusalem by the day of Pentecost, mentioned in Acts 20, 16 and 22 above. This clearly indicates that his purpose for being in Jerusalem by the day of Pentecost was to worship on that day, thus keeping and celebrating God's ordained feast day. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 8 But I, or Paul, shall stay on at Ephesus until Pentecost. Here, Paul uses Pentecost to mark time. This brings three questions to mind. 1. Paul uses the word Pentecost in this letter to the Corinthians, obviously expecting them to understand what he is referring to. Why would he expect the mainly converted Gentile, non-Jewish Christian believers in Corinth to know anything about the Jewish feast of Pentecost unless he, as their mentor, had taught them? Two, why would Paul have taught them about Pentecost if New Testament Christians no longer had to celebrate it? And that is a good question, and it's very obvious that they did. Three, finally, if New Testament Christians no longer had to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, as if to say, if it no longer held any particular significance in the life of the Christian, so that they kept track of when it occurred, then how could Paul possibly have used it to mark time? Next would be the Feast of Tabernacles, Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16 through 19. And all they that shall be left of all the nations that came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to adore the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall come to pass that he that shall not go up of the families of the land to Jerusalem to adore the king, the Lord of hosts, there shall be no rain upon them. And if the family of Egypt go not up nor come, neither shall it be upon them, but there shall be destruction wherewith the Lord will strike all nations that will not go up to the to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the sin of Egypt, and this the sin of all nations, that will not go up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Note, this yet-to-be-fulfilled prophecy at Zechariah 14, 16-19 clearly shows that God has not done away with the celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles in New Testament times, since he says all nations will still be celebrating it at some time in the future yet to come. By inference, neither has he done away with any of his other feast days. Next would be Passover and the Days of Unleavened Bread. Acts 26. But we ourselves, Luke and Paul, and maybe more, sailed from Philippi from the Days of the Unleavened Bread, and five days later joined them at Troos. And there we stayed seven days. Note, why did Luke and Paul wait till after the Days of Unleavened Bread before they sailed to Troos? The most obvious answer is because they were celebrating these days at Philippi. It was a Sabbath. They were not allowed to do something like that on that day. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new dough. As you really are without leaven, for Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep festival, 
not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Note, here Paul distinctly tells the converted Gentile Christians at Corinth to keep the festival of Passover. Obviously, the Passover feast had not been done away with in the New Testament times. Day of Atonement, Acts 27.9 But as much time had been spent and navigation was now unsafe, for the fast was already over, Paul began to admonish them. Note, once again Luke marks time by one of God's feast days, the Day of Atonement, the day all God's people are to afflict their souls, or fast, no eating or drinking. That's found in Leviticus 23 verses 26-32. What incentive was there for Luke or any Christian to know the date on which the Day of Atonement fell if they no longer had to celebrate it? What would be the use of remembering the date? The obvious answer is that they knew the date because they were still celebrating it in the New Testament. And I think it's pretty obvious by this whole research paper that um, God never planned for his feast days or his holy days to be uh, abolished. He planned for them to go on forever because not only were they significant to the Jews in their time, but now they are significant to the Christians because of what prophetical meaning they have. Um, Obviously, Passover being um, Jesus, that in itself is a good reason just to celebrate that one. So um, I'll leave you with that thought, but I know I've talked a lot recently about tradition and holidays and this is really like a, a bind for that, and I hope that you can maybe put a few of these videos together and consider how much truth there really is here. Um, I know it's not easy to stop um, celebrating holidays. I know myself, it's been very difficult. I know people um, very close to me that have lost friends and family because of stopping celebrating holidays, but that is a big, uh, I'll say, wall in front of a lot of Christians that they can't go any further without dropping this pagan tradition. And I understand that we don't understand it as pagan tradition, but I promise you the people who created all this stuff did, and we're just doing what they wanted. And that isn't okay. That's not okay to just sit here and be like, oh, well, I didn't do it. Everyone's doing it. It's okay. It's not. It's not. And that's that's why it's end times right now. That's why Jesus is going to be returning and why God is going to show his wrath Um, And I saw today that there was more wildfires in Oregon. I know there was just some on Maui and a bunch of people, up to 100 people died, it looked like, which I haven't seen anything like that in Hawaii in my life yet. But that's, it's scary. Uh, We need to be very careful. God is someone who chastises with fire, with fire. Look at our nation. Look at what we're doing as a nation and tell me why God wouldn't be doing this. We need to wake up. We need to wake up and realize what is mattering right now. And it's not tradition. It's not holidays. It's not these false churches and teachings that make you feel good and not convicted. It's the opposite of that. And um, it's your job to show God that you are on his side and you're going to fight for the things that he wanted for this planet. Because right now, those are the people that are going to be left. They are the ones that are going to carry on this priesthood with Jesus to live with him for eternity. Um, And at least on this world for a thousand years or 10,000 years, whatever, however you perceive that. Um, And then forever. You're telling me a holiday for 70 years of your life is worth it? It's not. Reconsider. I know it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of um, your self-understanding, a lot of seeking of the truth, and a lot of talking to your family because that's the people that are going to have to be on your side in this. And you're going to have to help them see this truth. God did not plan for his feast days, his holy days, to be abolished. They have been abolished. And as Christ followers, it is our job to make sure that we are still following God's plan. Just because Christ came doesn't mean we can go off and do what we want now. He died for us to have a chance at repentance. We are giving up that chance unless we start doing what is right. I hope you all have a blessed day. And uh, I will be speaking to you soon.